after a day where the average just rebounded like crazy, I thought it would be worth circling back to a once red hawk stock that has been viciously pounded over the last few weeks. I'm talking about Radius Health, RDUS. That's a development stage biotech company that's focused on creating drugs that treat osteoporosis and other endocrine mediated disorders. Now, Radius came public at eight bucks a little more than a year ago, and the stock soared as high as $83 last month. Since then, it's been slammed, like the others, down to 65 as of today, even though the story really hasn't changed at all. Some of that's because the company did a big 4.66 million share secondary, and that was at $74, but that secondary gave them roughly $325 million worth of cash which means this early-stage biotech can fund itself for quite some time. Of course, when you issue a bunch of new shares, it's natural for your stock to go down. What, what's crazy to me is that Radius reported last Thursday, and the stock plunged from 76 down to 68 because the company posted a larger-than-expected loss along with elevated research and development expenses. Why do I think that's nuts? Because Radius is a development-stage biotech, which means it doesn't have any products on the market. For these kinds of companies, we really don't care about the quarterly results. What really matters is the drugs they have in their pipeline and their clinical trial results. And in the case of Radius, this company's got a very strong osteoporosis drug in Phase three, where we've seen terrific data that shows it helps prevent bones from breaking and works much better than the current standard of care. This drug could potentially hit the market next year. That story hasn't changed one bit. Not, uh, nor have its earlier stage treatments for breast cancer or the vasometer, vaso, vasomotor symptoms of menopause. That's hot flashes in English. Feels like a good buying opportunity. Oh, let's not just, don't just take it from me. Let's check in with Bob Ward. He's the president of Radius Health. Hear more about how his company's doing and where it's headed. Mr. Ward, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Jim. Bob, I feel like we, we, we should talk about uh, the... <clears throat> the hot flash and breast cancer drugs it's because you've hired someone, Dr. Lorraine Fitzpatrick, chief medical officer. And I see she's immediately going to be speaking this fall. So, I mean, she seems like a big hire and it might matter. Oh, it matters quite a bit, Jim. Okay. Uh, Lori Fitzpatrick developed denosumab originally, both at Amgen and then at GSK. So she brings deep experience, not just in osteoporosis, but also in vasomotor symptoms and at ASBMR. Uh, Dr. Fitzpatrick will be presenting the major osteoporotic fracture reduction study out of our active and active extend. So we also got a oral plenary presentation for active extend. This is the marquee presentation. And uh, if you don't mind, I just for the people who are not that familiar, if you could just explain what it means to be the plenary speaker and what and and why that's so important versus say if, if you weren't. Well, at uh, the American Society of, of Bone and Mineral Research is the big American-based bone meeting each year. And the committee reviews different presentations to ask which one is likely to have the biggest impact as they select an oral presentation or poster presentation. And so our active extend trial was selected as an oral plenary presentation. This is the marquee presentation. Right. And we're uh, fortunate that uh, Dr. Felicia Kosman will uh, be providing that presentation. All right, now, uh, I know that some people were surprised when uh, your uh, main drug was not fast-tracked by the FDA. You did not seem surprised. It wasn't necessarily, I know you wanted it, but it didn't necessarily mean that there was a huge setback, right? No, our base case, Jim, has been a regular NDA uh, submission and a regular approval here in the U.S., and then in Europe, we'll submit a MAA for a regular review as well. Now, in the U.S., there's four different programs you can apply for, okay. and we'll apply for each as we go through them. It's not uncommon that these are not granted. They're granted as a rare exception, right. but it's upside if it's awarded, so we thought it was worthwhile. Applying. Well, the, the thing that I, I was concerned about was that if it, it's, it's clearly noticeable. It's clearly better than the alternative, but the fact is when there's an alternative already on the market, the FDA seems very reluctant to fast-track a competitor. Uh, it depends on the clinical profile and, and okay. a number of other criteria. What got us excited is that on major osteoporotic fractures, uh, we did an analysis that compared not just to baliperitide to placebo, but also in the trial, the analysis showed that there was a reduction as compared to Forteo. Now, in Europe, reducing major osteoporotic fractures is seen as a very important part of how osteoporosis programs are evaluated. So we're super excited about that data. Okay, now uh, the decline in the stock uh, it comes at a, at, at a ver in a kind of a there's no such thing as a positive decline if you own the stock. But you have the money now to go through how many of these trials without really without worrying about having to sell out or give away the big rights to something. Well, it did two things for us, Jim. Um, it put the launch of a baliperitide on our balance sheet. Right. So we're talking with partners today. You know, we're a development engine. We've finished a successful phase three program. Right. We're getting ready to submit 
but we'd like a partner that's also an expert on commercialization to work with us to commercialize a ballotparatide around the globe. But we also have a pipeline. Right. Most biotech companies don't necessarily have more than one a big idea. Rad 1901 in breast cancer, right. we showed in a preclinical model that Pfizer's Ibrance or Novartis's Affinitor used in combination with our 1901 had a more uh, important impact on tumor growth than either drug alone. So since that happened, phone's been ringing off the hook. Well, but that's a lot of work with us. Yes, on well, my, but my well. point, I mean, for instance, we had a big home run with Receptos, which we just hit endlessly. And what we liked about it was it had enough money. Right. So therefore, it could call <clears throat> its own shots. It didn't have to sell out if it didn't want to. It could partner. And the fact is, it could partner and get taken over, and it ended up being you know, fabulous for our, our viewers. I felt that Radius similarly has more than one shot on goal and now has the capital, so you don't have to beg. Absolutely, Jim. We can pick the right partner to do the best deal. That's just what we want. That's Bob Ward, Radius Health President and CEO. I think the decline is a gift because I think they've got many shots on goal, including some that are going to break next year. They have money is back in. Right? Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.